about, but I sold the microphone. <laughs> How was everybody morning? Morning. Oh, one more time. I know it's early, but I think you guys have a lot of energy. I can hear you talking to him in. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. What a great event we have planned for you guys this morning. We have some good activities. I think we have some good food. You guys have some goodie bags. Is there stuff to eat in there? Is there candy in there? Is there candy in the goodie bags? Do I have goodie bags? <laughs> Jennifer, do I have one? All right, as you said, uh, my name is Jen Mack. Uh, I'm from the city, so I didn't travel very far to be with you guys today. It's a uh, great weather. Um, I hear that um, she said that only the smart girls were here. Is that true? Minutes. <laughs> and then I went and got another 
job. And I didn't like that either. I got another one and another one and another one. Any guesses of how many jobs I've had throughout my lifetime? 30. Oh. How many? 30. Who said 30? You're absolutely correct. By the time I was 34 years old, can we get her a prize and help her By the time I was 34 years old, I had 29 different jobs. 29, that's a lot of jobs. I think that's above average or below average. Not many people have that many. Some I had for two days, some I had for three years. The longest I had was five years. That's also not very long for a job. But part of my thing is that my mom also instilled some other beliefs in me that, did, that were very helpful. And that was a victim mentality, scarcity mindset, and a negative attitude. How many of you have a negative attitude? Uh huh? <laughs> Now sometimes that trickles down from other people around you. And I'm going to share with you what I believe are the three keys to success. No matter what it is you decide you want to do with your life. No matter what. If it is a career, if you want to be a mom, if you want to be a good wife, if you want to be an occupational therapist, if you want to be a teacher, you're going to need these three steps. Wheel of Fortune, anyone? Because we're going to play. Who's good at Wheel of Fortune? Don't say it out loud, but who knows who this first one is? Yeah. And you guys, you guys are smart. And you guys are going to be engaged with me as we go through this process and we start to figure out what these are and how you can apply them. So today, I am going to tell you how you can move through from today to wherever success is for you, whatever that means. And hopefully you will be able to find a support group that be your family or friends. Uh, once you guys get jobs, coworkers that will support no matter what decision you make in your life and wherever it is you decide to go. Now remember those three beliefs that my mom kind of unfortunately instilled in me? Remember what they were? Come on, ladies. What was this? Negativity, a negative attitude. Victim mentality is poor me. I got this, you know, this hand held me or dealt me when I was a kid. And, or baby, you know, that kind of a mentality, and a scarcity mindset, which means what? I don't have any money. I'm poor, right? So I grew up single, a single mom, just my brother and I, everything was, we can't afford it, don't ask, we're not going to buy that, birthday's going to be pretty slim this year, right? And so it was, we don't have enough money. That was it still. So here I'm 20 years old, trying to make it, I graduated from college, I had really good grades, but yet I can't find the job that I want. And I have these three beliefs in front of me that are not helping me, right? So I kept thinking, here's this hand I've been dealt. Here's this environment I grew up in. Here's these attitudes that I have that are not helping me. And I just kept thinking, I just have to deal with it, right? This is a hand I've been dealt. I'm just going to have to get used to it. But I'm here to tell you, I was wrong. And if any one of you has that same feeling, that same circumstance, that poor me or a negative attitude where I'm never going to make it, I'm telling you right today, you're wrong. And I'm going to prove it to you. And I'm going to show you how you can bust through those things and make your way to success, no matter what that means to you. All right, I brought up with me today some of my best friends. I wanted you to see them. Now, I could have brought the whole library, but I don't drive that big of a car. So I'm going to share with you a few quotes that have made my life today where I am and has improved the things. I have gotten through the scarcity mindset, the negative attitude. Jennifer never would have had to come up. If I were talking to her on the phone, she said, do you need a keynote speaker? Are you a good person? No. I have a negative attitude. Like, okay, well, why don't you go and talk to these girls and try to inspire them? You think that would have happened? Absolutely not. Success comes with what? What do you guys keep hearing? Positivity, right? And sometimes that can be really difficult. And I'm going to share with you how we're going to do that. What's that book cover say? Change your thinking, change your life. Brian Tracy wrote a book. Change your thinking, change your life. Change your thinking, change your life. Those three things that I had when I came to college was my thinking. That was my belief about myself, right? It was instilled. That was the hand I was dealt. Here's your victim mentality card. Here's your scarcity mindset card. Here's your negative attitude. Good luck, right? I'm going to read a quote to you, and you're going to tell me what this word is. Because you guys are smart. I already heard that. Are you ready? Yes? 
If you absolutely believe that you are destined to be a great success, and you hold to this belief no matter what happens, then there is nothing in this world that can stop you from becoming that great success. So what's key component number one? Believe. How many of you believe in yourselves? How many of you want to? How many of you understand the importance of it? Hmm, you're going to get a tough crowd today, I can tell. All right. Your belief is the most important thing. What you believe. If you believe you're a good friend, if you believe that you're going to be a good wife, if you believe that you're going to get married, if you believe you're going to make good money, if you believe that you're going to have a safe, secure job, if you believe you're going to be a success, you're more likely to get that than if you were to say, no, I'm not. You believe me? Are you guys sleeping? Do we need some music and move around and do the next way now or something? How many of you have heard of this author, Wayne Dyer? Anybody? A couple people? Wayne Dyer wrote a book, Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life. Weird. Change your thoughts, change your life, change your thinking, change your life. Are you with me where we're headed here? How important is belief? If I, in my 20s, and having those three key, or those three thoughts that I had that were so unfortunately given to me as a kid, if I didn't believe I could be where I am today, I wouldn't have. If I didn't change my thinking back when I was in my early 20s, I would not have run any triathlons or numerous 5Ks. I wouldn't have started my own health and fitness business. I wouldn't have opened the doors to do women's retreats. I would not have adopted a 17-year-old boy, and I would not at all be standing in front of you. Are those successes? To me, those are successes. I would not have adopted a 17-year-old boy. Who does that? He's pretty happy, don't you think? He's pretty happy that all of a sudden, I decided I was a good enough person, I felt good and confident to adopt a boy. Who's 17? Who's 17 in here? Do you guys have families? Can you imagine not having family until right now? It's a big deal, and it was a big deal for both of us. If I didn't do those things, I would not be here, is what I'm telling you. If I didn't change my thinking, I would not have those successes. Today, what I want to share with you is not only these, I'm going to inform you of some new ideas. First of all, I just gave you one minute. Believe in yourself. Now, some of you are sitting there going, okay, seriously, lady, this is what you're going to be talking about today? But it's so important. And I'm going to go through the other steps to give you those tools. And I'm going to give you tools that you can use immediately because it's all about thought. You guys are all having thoughts right now. You're formulating an opinion about me. You're trying to figure things out about me by, by me standing in front of you, deciding if you like my shirt or my haircut. Right? You're thinking right now. It's not even interfering with what I do. So these are tools that you can use immediately. So as these presenters come up, you guys will be starting to think. Am I cut of that career? Could I make that kind of money? Could I do this? Could I, could I do what she's telling me to? Could I believe in myself and have those kind of successes? Right? Especially if any of you guys have negative attitudes or scarcity mindset or what's the last one? I think they're sleeping today. They, they travel a lot when they're, uh, when they're sleeping on the bus. I have another quote. You guys like this one. Napoleon Hill, how many of you have heard? Anybody? This book was written in 1937. Still on the New York Times bestseller list. Napoleon Hill was a 19 year old, met with Andrew Carnegie. How many of you guys have heard of Andrew Carnegie? Andrew Carnegie was one of the top businessmen in the country. And he gave the challenge to Napoleon Hill and said, I want you to interview the top 500 businessmen and women in our country over the next 20 years. And then I want you to compile all that information. What made them a success? What tools did they use? How did they get through? their obstacles, and then tell me, in a book, all the steps, and then you're going to put that book up for sale. So Napoleon Hill was just a student. He was not much older than you guys. So I have, before we delve into this, we're going to do an activity here in a second, um, another quote. It's a little bit of a passage. And you guys can participate. You guys don't have to be so quiet. This is a school, right? If you think you are beaten, you are. If you think you're not, you don't. If you like to win, but you think you can't, it is almost certain you won't. If you think you'll lose, you are lost. For out in the world we find 
Success begins with a fellow's will. It's all in a state of mind. If you think you are outclassed, you are. You've got to think high to rise. You've got to be sure of yourself before you can ever win a prize. Life's battles don't always go to the faster or stronger man. But sooner or later, the man who wins is a man who thinks he can. Have you heard that? If you think you can, when you think you can't, you're right. Henry Ford, who did what? What did Henry Ford do? What is Ford? What do you think Henry Ford did? <laughs> yes. He's the one who did all the, well, we're going to put all these cars together on the line. Right? You're going to do wheels, you're going to do dashboards, you're going to do doors, and we're going to build a car in 15 minutes, a car driving off the top of 15 minutes. But, so Keen is that. So it's not a conveyor belt, I forget that's called, but he's the one who put that whole thing, assembly line together. Henry Ford, if you think you can, or you think you can't, you are right. We're going to do an activity because we're talking about belief, and I want to know what you believe. I want to know what kind of beliefs we're dealing with today. So there's a piece of paper, um, an uh, index card, and a pencil in your bag. Now, before you think, you can take a little bit of drawing, writing notes, hold down a little paper airplane. We're going to use these cards twice a day. So this very third activity is going to be not only honest, so I need you to be brutally honest, with yourself. You're not going to be sharing these. You're not coming up on stage. You're not going to be, you know, sharing with your friends. You're not going to be, you know, uh, showing your friends or your classmate next, next to you. So, honestly, but keep it secret. But don't throw away because we're going to use the card again and we're going to use these activities again. Okay? So the very first one. There are two words in the belief key component that are the most important words that you tell yourself. Two, these are the most important words in the world. What are they? I am. Who's in, who is in here that doesn't feel very good right now? Anybody? And you would say, I am sick. Right? Who in here feels really good, healthy? I am healthy. Right? It all starts with what you believe. And those two words, whatever you put after it, is what starts to get the brain going or not going. If I say I am sick, and then I say I am sick, and I think I don't feel good, I'm sick, I'm sick, what starts to happen? I start to feel sick. Okay? I am healthy. I am healthy. I am healthy. What starts to happen? Right. Those of you that are shouting or that are, that are giving answers, give those answers. This is a day to be confident. This is a day. We're all women. Are there any men in here at all? No. No competition. All the guard down. So when you have an answer, shout it out. Okay? Because most likely it's right. I am. So we're going to do three activities right now, and you're going to tell me what your I am statement is. And we're going to do it in three different areas. So the first area, picture this. You get up in the morning, you're looking in the mirror, brush your teeth, doing your hair, whatever it is, you do, make up, whatever. What do you say to yourself? Now remember, do not share this. Don't, what are you putting that? Why am I putting that? But this is private. So put up the blinders, cover it, secret, write it really, really tiny. I am what? Regarding your physical self. I am what? And adults, are you guys different? Did you guys all come with the students? Some of you guys back there? So you did. You guys can do this activity too. So even though this is directed more towards them, this is extremely powerful. So anyone who wants to change anything in your life, starting with these two words, I am what? Hey, well done. All right, eyes up, are you done? Okay, the next one. If you are faced with anything that is challenging, that challenges your intellect, we're going to take an economics class. We're going to take a calculus class. Okay? Anything that challenges. You're going to read, you're going to read this book by Dr. Wayne Dyer and do a report on it. Anything that challenges you. Not something that's easy, something that's new, something that challenges you. I am what? Regarding your intellect. Remember, keep it quiet. Don't ask your neighbor what they wrote down. Be honest. What do you say? 
All right, the third one. What do you say to yourself during a challenging circumstance or situation? I'm going to go to prom for the first time. I'm going on a date. I'm going to go to a party where there's going to be people there I don't know. I'm going to a new school. Um, I'm going to some event that's been, where there's going to be asking me to do something, like get on stage or say something. This is regarding circumstance or situation. I am what? Now remember, we're not. You're not going to be sharing these ideas. I'm not going to ask you to stand up and tell me what you said. It's extremely important that you find out where you're standing in these three different areas. Okay. Once you're done, pencils down, eyes up. Flip your cards over so no one can read them. Then what I want you to do is in a second, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. Because I want to know how to hear my speech and my, my communication with you guys. I want to know kind of what we're dealing with a little bit. So what I'm going to do is have you close your eyes so you can't see anybody raise your hand. And I'm going to say, who gave a negative response to the physical? And you just quietly, calmly put your hand. You don't have to me. Okay. That's going to be kind of a piece All right. So close your eyes. All right. Who gave a negative response about their physical self? Okay. Hands down. Who gave a negative response about their intellect? Hands down. Who gave a negative response about new circumstances or situations? Okay, hands down. All right, eyes open. Now, what am I telling you? What is all of this? What I'm actually saying to you is the power of this right here can change your life. So, a few hands went up in each category, and it was maybe about 50%. Now what that tells me is, of course, you guys are struggling with some challenges, right? As we all are. But you're thinking, right, but Jen, I am overweight. Yeah? And Jen, our family doesn't have a lot of money. Right? And my dad is struggling with work. Uh-huh. And my mom says, life just isn't fair. And I say, you're right. Life isn't fair. Life should be great. On a scale from four to great, would you rather have fair or would you rather have great? great. How many of you want great lives? And that is great in physical, intellect, and circumstance. You can't control the outside. You guys, no matter what you do, cannot control my behavior. So if I'm irritating you, there's not much you can do about it. Right? Not at this point. So what do you have to do? You have to change your thinking. And we'll get into, we'll get into that one side. If you are to become a success and have a great life, what's the first thing you need to do? You need to believe you can. You need to believe it's possible. What I was saying earlier is, if I say, let's say I'm overweight, and that's the first thing I want to change. In the physical part, I say that I'm fat. I'm overweight. I'm unhealthy. Whatever you say to yourself. And I keep thinking, I'm fat, I'm fat, I'm fat, I'm fat. What happens to my feelings? Do I feel good? No. Okay. What happens to my actions? Do I change any of my behavior? Okay. So now let's go back to the beginning and say, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm thin, I'm strong, I'm healthy. What happens to my feelings? And then what happens to my actions? They also start to change. So now, at lunch, I choose something different. Instead of coming home and, and playing video games or sleeping, I go for a walk. I join a gym. I join a boot camp. Right? So, if we are to change our thinking, what's the first thing we have to do? Start with these two most powerful words. Let's say that every single morning I give you a clean sheet of paper and it just appears. It's a magic piece of paper with a magic pencil. And you get to write your day, starting with I am statements on your paper. And you write, I am fat. I am not good at math. I am not getting along with my parents. What kind of name do you have? So let's go back to the beginning. Throw that one away, get a new sheet. What are you struggling with? What do you want? What kind of name do you want? 
I am healthy, I am a good student, and I get along just fine with my parents. Now what? A little bit better today, right? Yes? Today, you are going to be, you are going to be hearing from different presenters. You are going to be hearing from a graphic designer, meteorologist, we have a meteorologist in the house? I think, yep. Yeah. You're going to be hearing from a uh, veterinarian, am I right? You're a veterinarian? And these are jobs that you may have heard of before, and you, you know probably what they do, and, and, and you might think, yeah, I could do that. And what I want you to do is, after you're listening to these presenters, I want you to keep an open mind. I want you to listen to what they're saying, and I want you to be aware of one thing. I want you to be aware of your thoughts. If you're listening to the veterinarian, and she's telling you about school maybe she had to go through, she's telling you about the schedule, the things that maybe were a struggle, maybe even how much money she makes, the things that she loves about her job, and you're thinking, man, that would be a lot of fun. I love animals. I would love to be a veterinarian. And then listen for the thought if there's one that follows that says, yeah, but I'm not good at biology. Do you think a veterinarian has to be good at biology? Yes? They gotta know where the liver is, don't they? They gotta know how to care for your animal, right? So they have to know good, they have to be good at biology. As soon as, if that kind of thought comes into your mind and you're listening to one of the presenters, and it's something like, yeah, but I'm not, I am not good at something, I want you to squash that belief immediately with two other words. What if? What if I could do that? What if I could be good at biology? What if I could learn? What if I could be a vet? Right? Does that make you feel just a little bit better? Using those words, a little bit more powerful, right? If I were to say, this moment is the only moment you have. 10 minutes ago is gone. 10 minutes in the future is always in the future. All you have right now is this second. You guys are all choosing to sit here quietly and listen to me, or at least look at me, right? You're choosing that. So what I'm telling you is today is the first day of the rest of your life. How many of you have ever heard that quote before? You get sick of hearing it? Who knows what it means? Does anybody know what it means? You can change anything right now. Who's saying it? Can you stand up and, and yell at me? Um, you can change anything right now. Say it one more time. You can change anything right now. Can you guys all hear her? You could have been my assistant up here. <laughs> you need a microphone? <coughs> you can change anything right now. Is there something that you want to change right now? Anything? Anybody? Are any of you struggling with anything right now? Who? Who has a struggle right now? Anything? Weight? Grades? Relationships? Okay, we're going to do something. We're going to have to get loud in here. So I need to understand that you guys are still, your heart's still pounding and your blood's still flowing. So everybody stand up. <laughs>
when I was 20 to now I'm 40, that was a long time of me having to figure out all of these things. Lots of books, right? We're going to get to the next key. Who knows what this next word is? No. What did you say? No. Turn it. How many of you have a struggle in here? Who has a struggle in here? Something that you're working on. Something you're trying to get through. A challenge. An obstacle. Probably everybody. Even if it's just a little one. No. What is it? Say it again. Yes. Say it again. Problem, solving, guilt. You will have, no matter how old you get, how successful you are, what your life looks like 20 years or 30 years or 50 years from now, you will always have a challenge. How do you get around it, through it, or over it? Einstein says, one of the most intelligent men in our, in our day, says, a problem cannot be solved with the same level of thinking that created it. That tells me two things. What does it tell you? What's the first thing? A problem cannot be solved with the same level of thinking that created it. What's the first thing it tells you? Change your thinking. You need to grow, you need to change, you need to learn something new. So every problem is an opportunity to learn something new, right? Change your thinking, change your life. And the second thing it says, he says, problem cannot be solved with the same level of thinking that created it. What? My thinking creates problems? Do you guys believe that? You probably do now, don't you? Back to our stand in the mirror. I'm fat, I'm fat, I'm fat. What's happening? Are we creating another problem? Because then what? Our, our actions don't change. So the problem states, created by our thinking, created probably by an external. Someone told us that. Someone told us that they weren't healthy, right? Now I'm just, I'm only using that example because I'm a, I'm a fitness, I'm a boot camp instructor and a personal trainer, and so it's always on my mind when talking about health. And I, I work with a lot of women who are overweight, and so one of the main problems is I'm overweight. And I say, what do you say to yourself? And they say, I'm fat. And then what happens? Well, tomorrow, right, they just keep going. Ten years from now, they might still be overweight. So what's the first thing that needs to change? Their I am statement to themselves, which is their mindset. They're thinking. Then what? Solve the problem. How are you going to solve the problem? Now, you can tell, how do I solve problems? How many of you read in here? How many of you like it? Good, very good. I will tell you, sometimes, now only because this happened to me, is that in high school sometimes we're given books to read that we might not be interested in, that we have to do a report on it or a, a speech or something, right? And sometimes that can deter us from being like long learners. But you're never going to be without problems, ever. You just have to learn how to get through them, over them, or around them, okay? Now, I use a few different things. Here's some more tools for you. I read. So when I have a problem, I go find a book. Amazon and I are really good friends. The mailman <laughs> loves me. None of the books ever fit in the mailbox, so she always has to come to the house and so we talk sometimes come in for coffee and stuff. But anyway, so if you're not getting your mail, listen to our statement. If you're not getting your mail, it's because of me and I got a book that day. So read. There's how many of you guys have a smartphone where you can read books on your smartphone? Or a Kindle, or an iPad, or an iPhone, right? There's tons of ways to read. There's blogs, there's ebooks, there's uh, reports. Of course, regular books. Now, Borders went out of business. I don't know if you guys are upset about that, but I am. So Amazon and I are now Facebook friends. What else can you do to solve problems? Ask questions. Smart people ask questions. Do you guys feel comfortable asking? Who said no? Why is that? It's embarrassing. Why is it embarrassing? What did I just say? Smart people ask questions. Now Jennifer kept telling me, we had lots of emails back and forth, and she says, you know, Jen, you have to talk to them like they're smart. Because they're smart. Don't try to bamboozle them. Are you guys smart? We just said it, right? I am healthy, I am you find smart. So why would asking questions make you feel dumb? How are you going to get the answer? Do you think Einstein asked questions? Yes. 
You think Napoleon Hill asked questions? He asked a lot of questions to 500 different business people, top of the line business people. Can you imagine right now going in with a sheet of paper and a pencil, being 18, 19 years old, or even 17 years old, and walking in and talking to a man who's 56 who owns a multi million dollar company? Could you answer that? Could you ask him questions? You could if, if you wanted to, right? I mean, you could if it, you took the challenge. So, smart people ask questions. Next time you have a question, what are you going to do? Okay. Ask it. Another thing, the next thing I do is I mentor. If someone, let's go back to the overweight. I'm 33 years old, let's say. I'm overweight, I'm tired of it. Let's say I'm a mom of two. And I now want to believe, right, that I'm healthy. I'm starting to make better choices. I'm trying to problem solve. I'm trying to find solutions. I, I ordered Jillian Michaels' uh, last fat video. I've got um, Bob Parker's yoga. I joined a boot camp, and it's not working out. My neighbor is doing something, and she's lost 50 pounds already. So I could go over there and ask, how did you do it? What's going on? Mentor takes a step further. She might say, well, I'm taking a spin class right down the street at the local gym. Okay, so I go take a spin class. Let's say it's not working out. I go back over and ask. And then what I might do is, can you mentor me? Because maybe my diet is not quite right. Maybe there's something else I'm missing, right? Can you mentor me? Can you give me an idea? Can you, can you help me? Can I meet with you once a week, twice a month, something? That's what mentoring is. But now you're going to do that with someone who has gone through what you want to do, right? If she didn't lose weight, if she's 200 pounds or more and has not done it, the chances of me getting the right answer from her are pretty slim because if she knows the answer, wouldn't she be doing it? So you want to ask from people who have done, have gone through what you're wanting to achieve. That makes sense? All right. Listen to audio, podcasts, and CDs. How many of you are driving? Have a car, okay. Do you guys have phones where you can plug in, you can download an MP3 or a, um, iTunes, an audio program, a CD or something? That's another way. I, I drive a lot. I love to drive. And so if I, if I drive, then something, I'll have something downloaded or whatever. I can't read in the car, so sometimes I drive. Now what you do is take these tools. So when you mentor with that lady across the street and she says, well, I eat fruits and vegetables and protein in the morning instead of sugary cereal and toast. So then, now take that information and start to apply it. Change your thinking, changes your feelings, changes your outcome, changes your life, right? Okay, we'll get on to the next one. One more recommendation for problem solving is a book journal. Now there was a whole bunch of hands that went up that said I like to read. I love to read. So I have several book journals. And what that means is if I'm meeting you guys for lunch and she recommends a book to me and I'm like, oh, I like that. I write the author or I write the title down and I write the author, and then maybe a sentence or two about what it is that book is about. So then later, I can pick it back up and be like, perfect, great suggestion. And then, when you're reading the book, sometimes books will lead you to other books. Okay? So there's another idea. All right. Now, if you're going to be mentoring with somebody, or you're going to be asking questions of someone, we're talking about people, right? What's my last word? People skills. How many of you guys have good people skills? What does that mean to have good people skills? One more time. Who said? What does that mean? Because I'm talking to you. Does that mean you have good people skills? One more time. You can talk to people. You're not scared. How many of you have a hard time expressing how you feel? How many of you have a hard time talking to your parents? How many of you have a hard time talking to your teachers? Why? Why? Come on. I am. Who can read that? Anybody? Maybe you just wrote that on your sheet of paper. Yes. Sorry. Yes. They didn't give you binoculars in that background? I am afraid. Here's your sheet of paper. What are you writing on it? I am afraid. I'm afraid to talk to people. I'm afraid to ask questions. I might feel stupid. I'm afraid. What are you doing? What are you doing? What's happening to your feelings? What's happening to your level of confidence? What can you write instead? What? Brave. I am confident. I like brave. Mostly because it's small enough, I can fit it in the space. 
<laughs> I am great. How about you write that on a piece of paper? Okay, people skills. In order to, are we not with people? Do all of these adults have the people skills you think? What do you think that they have to have in order to get along with all of you? All these teenage girls. <laughs> you guys feel like adults might think you're scary. You might be volatile. You can explode at any moment. <laughs> we have no idea what's going on in your head, especially when you're quiet, right? You've got to be aware of the quiet ones, <laughs> right? Because what are you thinking? I'm afraid to express my feelings. What are we thinking? Don't, don't rock the boat. Something might happen, <laughs> right? We must act. There's an acronym, ACT, not like the test you guys take. <laughs> ACT, I'm afraid to it. The first thing we must do, I'm going to write in red. The first thing we must do when we are with other people is accept. Acceptance. Now, I don't expect that you and I will be best friends the moment I walk out the door. But right now, you're not throwing stuff at me. You guys aren't talking while I'm talking. So all of that is accepting. You're accepting that I'm giving you this information. You're accepting that I'm up here rambling for a few extra minutes, right? What's the next one? Someone, someone said it a little while ago. I think she said it. I think you said it. What's the scene? That's a good one. I'll do that in another one. Communicate. You must communicate your thoughts, your feelings. Right? If you and I are friends and all of a sudden you're really upset with me, I have no idea what you're mad about unless you communicate. Anyone have an idea of what T might stand for? What? That would fall in the communicate. Tolerate. Everybody is on a journey to somewhere. Do you believe that in 10 years, probably in 10 years from now, most of you will not know each other. Facebook friends, now there's, now there's tons of ways, but you probably won't be hanging out with each other anymore. You'll go to college, you'll, go to different, you'll have different careers, you'll meet different people. Some of you will go into the military, and you guys will not be in these, in these towns, and you will kind of dissipate all over the country, all over the world. And you may not know each other. So this moment, with the five of you, or six of you at the table, that's your time. This is your time. This, these are your, are your keys. Okay? And there's going to be in 10 years from now, it's going to be completely different. You'll have a whole new set of friends, a whole new set of people that you work with. Because right now, these are kind of your co-workers. You're learning to work together. Learning to be a team, right? And then there's going to be times where you're going to be in a career, and you're going to have a whole new team, and a whole new set of people to work with. Okay? Everyone has a right to be who they are, just like you do. So tolerating people's differences. Everybody's on a different journey, okay? I'm going to end with a few quotes. One from each of these three areas, starting with belief. Wayne Dyer, you'll see it when you believe it. And that starts with the I am statements. It's just like health. If I want to get healthy, I start with I am healthy. Changes my feelings, right? How I look at things, how I feel inside. So then change my outcome. I start making different choices. Problem solving skills. This is perfect. Uh, this is uh, Brendan Francis. The best way to escape from a problem is to solve it. The best way to escape from a problem is to solve it. And I gave you some good solving tools. People skills by Martin Luther King Jr. People fail to get along because they fear each other. They fear each other because they don't know each other. They don't know each other because they have not communicated. So, only smart people ask questions. You have those I am statements on your sheet of paper. I'm going to be back up in a little while after a couple of presentations. Keep an open mind. Watch those thoughts that are coming in. Remember to use what if. What if I can do that? What if I can be good at that? Remember? That sheet of paper that you your I am statements, put it in your bag, put it in your pocket, put it in your purse. Don't share it with anyone. We're going to use it in a different activity. Right now, we're going to bring Jen back up so she can introduce the next. I appreciate you guys being patient. We have a great event for you.
we're very excited.